It's magic item time as we continue on our Fizzbands Treasury of Dragons coverage. There's technically going to be two videos on magic items. This first one, which is just on the new magic items, and a separate one that will be the next video covering the concept of horde magic items. We've heard a little bit about them in uh, promo material, and I'll explain it in full detail once we get into that. But we do have several standalone brand new magic items ranging, I think, all the way from common up to legendary. So very cool stuff to take a look at. Before we dive into that though, I did wanna say if you like this, what I'm doing here on the channel and you wanna support it, there are a variety of different ways you can do so, clicking the join button, Patreon, we have merch. I also just got this one to test it in. I have these coffee is my patron. We have them in a mug. And now Teespring does these cool uh, like stainless steel travel mugs. I thought that was cool. Uh, or the simplest and freest option is to just click subscribe to the channel, which that number, as you see, continues to go up. And that's purely thanks to all of you, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's dive right in. Let me zoom in a little bit so the folks on mobile can see, and I don't get yelled at by them. Uh, so first up we have, uh, you're obviously going to see a lot of these are shocker dragon themed. So we have the amethyst lodestone. This is a very rare attunement magic item. And it is a fist of basically amethyst dragon for lack of a better term. But because amethyst dragons sort of have a gravitational bend to the way they are, what their abilities are, this lets you do things similar. It has six charges. It's a, they're calling it a lodestone. So, you know, it, it can be whatever size you want. It's about the size of a fist. Uh, it regains a d6 charges daily at dawn. As a bonus action, you can expend a charge to gain the power of flight for 10 minutes. For that duration, you get a fly speed equal to your walking speed, and you can hover. It also is non-concentration, so that's pretty solid, and to be able to activate it as a bonus action is a nice little thing. And then you also get two other abilities. One is a gravitational thrust as an action, expend a charge to focus gravity around a creature within 60 feet. They must make a DC 18 strength save or be pushed 20 feet in a direction of your choice. A lot of very interesting and very useful abilities can be done by a 20 foot push, especially in any direction you want, because that could also be in theory up or down, but like off a cliff into an enemy, things of that nature. And then lastly, as an action, you can spend three charges to cast the reverse gravity spell also with a DC of 18. We have the crystal blade, again, a sword fashioned from some aspect of a crystal dragon. This is a any sword, shocker, <laughs> we have another sword magic weapon, uh, rare and it uh, does require attunement. So when you hit with an attack roll using this sword, the target takes an extra D8 radiant damage. That is a fantastic weapon without anything else because anything that does radiant damage is often sought after because most things are not resistant to radiant damage, let alone immune, with the exception of certain celestial creatures. It also has three charges, and it gets a uh, 1d3 charges back daily at dawn. When you hit a creature with an attack roll using the sword, you can expend one of those charge uh, charges to deal a number of hit points. I'm sorry, to regain a number of hit points equal to the extra radiant damage the sword dealt. So again, it deals an extra d8 radiant damage. You can expend a charge to get hit points uh, equal to that amount. So it's not a ton, but if you crit, that extra D8 could be 2D8, and there's ways that that can work. It also sheds bright light. Uh, as a bonus action, you can cause it, rather, to shed bright light, 30 foot radius, uh, dim light, 30 foot, uh, for, let's see, bright light to 30 foot, dim light for another 30 feet, and uh, to cause it to shed dim light in a 10 foot radius or douse the light. So you can basically choose the range. It's So it doesn't glow immediately, you can have it glow with this pretty significant bright light area or cause it to shed dim light in a 10 foot radius or just douse the light entirely as bonus actions on your turn. The most exciting part that we got in my mind in Magic Item Land is the Dragon Hide Belt, a legitimate monk only weapon. Why we don't see more items contained in any of the Magic Item books that we have that just have items specifically for certain classes this is available in a plus one, plus two, and plus three rarity. While wearing it, you gain a bonus to the saving throw DCs of your key features. So this would be things like Stunning Strike, if you have anything else that uses key, that kind of a thing, they get that bonus there. And it's determined by the belt's rarity, so either plus one, plus two, or plus three. And then an amazing extra ability here. In addition, you can use an action to regain key points equal to a roll of your martial arts die once until the next dawn. That's huge because that is a great magic item that you could give someone very early on and it also inherently grows with them as their martial arts die increases. This is a exceptionally well-designed magic item. We need whoever made this magic item to go and make a bunch more magic items 
for the other classes. We know we have a ton of things tied to spellcasters. We have even more so things that are for a sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. We have a couple of items for druids uh, and rangers. We have a couple of things, I think, for clerics. Uh, we have, I think, one item, standalone item, for paladins, and that's the Holy Avenger. We have a couple cleric or paladin magic items. This is the first ever monk specific. We do not have any, as far as I know, rogue specific, fighter specific, barbarian specific uh, magic items. And I think we even have artificer specific magic items that came out in Tasha's, and that class just came out. So I'm very excited for this. I hope that this means we're going to get more items like this in the future. I also would have loved to see more monk items in this book, especially because they put a monk subclass in it. But moving on. The legendary Dragon Lance of Dragon Lance fame here is either a lance or a pike. Legendary requires attunement. Um, let's see. It says different lances are forged for use by foot soldiers as pikes or dragon riders as lances or any kind of rider, uh, but the magical properties are the same. They are plus three weapon, and when you hit a dragon with this weapon, it takes an extra 3d6 force damage, and any dragon of your choice you can see within 30 feet of you can immediately use its reaction to make a melee attack. So, uh, that doesn't, I mean, I guess it should be legendary because it's a plus three item with other effects, but it feels, again, I'm not super familiar with the Dragonlance franchise. It, I actually have it. It's on my list of things to read. I just haven't had the time. Also, a magical bow, folks. This is just blowing my mind because we got a magic item for monks. We got a decent overall sword for everybody, but we got a magic bow. And it's not an oath bow or a plus one bow. It's really good. This is a dragon wing bow. It is any bow, which in theory could be a crossbow as far as I'm concerned. It says any bow. Crossbow is still technically a bow, in a way, so I would allow it. Uh, rare requires attunement. Uh, the limb tips of this magic bow are shaped like dragon's wings and infused with a certain essence. When you hit with an attack roll using this bow, the target takes an extra d6 damage of the same type infused in the bow. Acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, necrotic, poison, psychic, radiant, or thunder, depending on the type of dragon it's designed after. If you load no ammunition in this bow, it produces its own automatically creating one piece of ammunition uh, when you pull back the string. The ammunition created by the bow vanishes after it hits or misses. So not only is this a nice magic bow that does extra damage, it also generates its own ammunition, which is amazing. Uh, I love that. Next up, we have the an uncommon magic item in the Emerald Pen. Uh, it's basically after an Emerald Dragon. Uh, while holding this pen, you can cast Illusory Script at, at will. No material components required. Then we have a, a Tiamat magic item, the Flail of Tiamat. It says legendary, requires attunement, uh, has five different heads. You get a plus three bonus to attack or damage with this, and when you hit with an attack roll using the Flail, uh, the target takes an extra 5d4 damage of a choice of your type from Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison. While holding it, you can also use an action and speak a command word to cause the heads to breathe multicolored flames in a 90-foot cone, which is a large area. Then the saving throw is a dex save of DC 18, and on a failure, they take 14d6 damage of whatever the type you want, acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison, half as much on a success, and that is again once until the next dawn. Then we have another really great magic item, the golden canary, or the gold canary figure uh, of wondrous power, uh, adding to the figurines of wondrous power lot. Uh, this one's obviously themed after Bahamut. It can turn into a giant canary. Uh, for up to eight hours and can be ridden as a mount once the figurine has become a giant canary it can't be used again that way until the next dawn which is also something nice because this is a uh, a figurine of wondrous power like some of them have multiple days between uses you can use this one in theory every day which is pretty awesome and we do have a new stat block for a giant canary which technically is a beast stat block that you could use for a druid nothing too crazy challenge rating one half 60 foot fly speed uh, but it does have a peck attack that has a plus four to hit and does a d10 plus uh, two piercing damage. So again, nothing crazy, but the other main feature of it is it also has gold dragon form. While you are missing half or more of your hit points, the person who has the figurine, you can speak a different command word and the figurine becomes an adult gold dragon for an hour. Uh, it can't use legendary actions or lair actions, and once it's become an adult gold dragon, it can't be used this way again until a full year has passed. In either form, the creature is friendly to you and your companions. It understands your language, obeys your commands. Uh, if you issue no commands, it defends itself. It exists for the duration. 
specific to each form. At the end of the duration, it reverts to its figurine form. It reverts to a figurine early, which drops to zero hit points, or you use a reaction to touch it and make it change into a figurine again. Um, and it can't be used again until that certain amount of time. So the canary can be every day until the next dawn, after uh, its eight-hour period of being on this plane, whereas the gold dragon is one hour, and then it can't be used for a year. This is a pretty nice flying mount option for people that can be a very dangerous, uh, you know, oh shit button in using the gold dragon. Then we have the sort of Bahamut magic item here in the Platinum Scarf, a legendary scarf that requires attunement. Um, as an action, you can pull a scale from the scarf and speak a command word and do one of the following things. Breath of Life, the scale disappears and you or a creature you choose within, uh, or your creature you, sorry, you touch rather, gains 10d4 hit points. Uh, Platinum Shield, for one hour or until you dismiss it, the scale becomes a plus one shield, which you or another creature can use. It also grants that creature immunity to radiant damage or Radiant Hammer. Similar to that, it becomes a Magical Light Hammer, uh, which you or another creature can use. This weapon does 2d4 Radiant Damage instead of Bludgeoning. Uh, it deals an extra 2d4 damage to Chromatic Dragons. Once three scales have been pulled from the Scarf, no more scales can be removed until the next dawn, uh, when all of the missing scales grow back. If you pull off a scale but don't speak a command word, it disappears after a minute. We have a Potion of Dragon's Majesty. This looks like Liquid Gold with a single scale from a chromatic gem or metallic dragon suspended in it. When you drink it, you transform into an adult dragon of the same kind as the scale from it. It lasts for an hour. Any equipment you are wearing or carrying melds into your new form. For the duration, you use the game statistics of that adult dragon, but retain your language's personality and memories, and you can't use their change shape ability or its legendary or lair actions. This I was very excited to see. I was going to hope we had some form of something that lets you turn into a dragon. That was a big thing in the Draconomicon. There was a couple of different ways to do that. I'm glad this appeared as well. Then we have the Ruby Weave Gem. I guess this is supposed to sort of be the Sardiar magic item. It is legendary, but this one does require attunement by a spellcaster. This can be a spellcasting focus for your spells. Uh, it has three charges and gets them all back at dawn. When you cast a spell while holding this gem, you can expend up to three charges to ignore the material components with a gold piece cost of up to 500 GP per charge expended. So if you expend all three, you can use a, a material component up to 1,500 gold pieces. And when you finish a long rest, choose a class spell from any list. The spell you choose must be of the level you can cast, and you know this spell and can cast it with your spell slots of the appropriate level until the end of your next long rest. Again, this might have a pretty good use on something like a paladin or a cleric who has access to higher level healing magics and being able to bypass uh, the, the resurrection costs and things like that could be huge, plus giving them access to a spell from another class list that might be of use to them. That just does require you to know what else is on other class lists. All right, almost done. The Sapphire Buckler is a very rare shield that requires attunement. Uh, while wielding this shield, you have resistance to psychic and thunder damage, and when you take damage from a creature within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to deal 2d6 thunder damage to that creature. As an action, you can use the shield to help locate aberrations until the end of your next turn. If any aberrations are within one mile of you, the shield emits a low humming tone uh, for a moment, and you know the direction of all aberrations within that one mile range, and that property can't be used again until the next dawn. And then lastly, the weirdest out of left field one, the Topaz Annihilator, a legendary attunement firearm. It is a ranged weapon that resembles a musket, but in lieu of ammunition, it holds a glowing yellow scale from a topaz dragon in its heart. It has a normal range of 100 feet and a long range of 300 feet, and it has the two-handed property. It deals 2d6 necrotic damage on a hit. If the damage reduces a creature or object to zero hit points, it is reduced to dust. A creature reduced to dust can only be returned to life via true resurrection or the wish spell, and if that wasn't badass enough... While you, this weapon is on your person, you can use an action to cast the Disintegrate spell with a DC of 18 once until the next dawn. I gotta be honest with you, the Topaz Annihilator was really something I didn't expect to see, but it shows that they are embracing the concept of firearms in Dungeons and & Dragons, and I think it's amazing. I think it's awesome that, like, it would have been probably fine to just have that kind of damage and that range, but they also gave you a freebie Disintegrate once a day, so that's pretty awesome. I like the Sapphire Buckler in that it has uh, some resistances, uh, but it also gives you reactive damage. Uh, the Potion of Dragon's Majesty, who doesn't want to turn into a dragon? Um, 
uh, the figurine of wondrous power is also nice because remember this is a non-attunement magic item so you can technically get that if you are playing someone evil and can get access to the flail of tiamat or it, actually it doesn't require you to be evil to attune to it either um it's pretty awesome. It is a very powerful and useful legendary weapon. I also like flails. I like non-typical weapons, so that's cool. But I think the, the three standouts for me are the Crystal Blade as a pretty badass sword, the Dragon Hide Belt as finally a magic item for monks, and then the Dragon Wing Bow, an actual magic bow that's not something like very rare or legendary or whatever the Oath Bow is, so... Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What is your favorite new magic item? Was there a magic item you were hoping to say? Because I should say there are no like other artifact magic items kicking around in this book. This is the list of magic items. We do again have the horde magic items, which are magic items in and of themselves, but they have the capabilities to grow with your character in theory if you're able to meet the requirements. But either way, I think they're pretty awesome as well. But I was hoping for some more mystical things like the Draconomicon as a book, the Draco Mystere, some of these other fancier magic items. So there were some I was hoping for would have appeared in this book but didn't. Is there any that you think? Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you all next time.